I want to speak about uh, the. Uh, I try to give a perspective on the, other, the development of adaptive optics in the context of thermal compensation system, based on what we learned and what we know about the installation of the TCS in, in Virgo. So, very quickly, quick uh, remind of what is what are the sources of thermal of aberration the total budget for an interfer gravitational wave interferometer. The, they are basically divided in two bunches. There are cold effects that are already in the optics, and the dynamical effects that are triggered by the power injected in the interferometer. The effects also are divided, again, in the thermal lens and inside the optics. That could be due, of course, by mm, the, due, due to the heating of the, of the optics and to the homogeneity of refraction index and impurities and so on, and the thermoelastic, the bulge at the center of the, of the optic due to, to the heating again, and of course there are manufacturing errors that, like a mismatch of the rocks uh, at the state of the art procedure for the production of the optics. Um, in the case of advanced Virgo, all this budget is relevant because we are close, we have in a condition of marginal stable uh, recycling cavities. So uh, we have to t take into account all these effects uh, at a high level. These are examples of the requirements in the case of Virgo. For instance, the RMS value of the OPL distortion must be less than 2 nanometers to get a recycling gain uh, higher than um, 50%. And in terms of spatial frequency, you have to correct for all the, sp the frequencies that are below uh, 40, 50, uh, 40, something like this, uh, meters to the minus, minus one. If you take uh, all the maps that have been measured for the optics of advanced Virgo and you put in a simulation, you get that at the moment with uh, uh, the power injected at 14 uh, watts level, we have that the gain of the uh, sideband is close to its maximum with a, a, radi a radius of curvature of the power recycling mirror, which is close to the actual one. Uh, so we are lucky, but if we go to higher, uh, higher power injected, uh, we will have that, uh, of course, this, this gain will, go, will drop, and we need to, to act <laughs> to compensate for that. So this is the idea of the thermal compensation system. This is a sketch of how it works, just as a reminder. We have actuators that are divided in CO2 laser projectors uh, that act uh, projecting a heating pattern on uh, compensation plates in front of the input optics to uh, recover the way from uh, cleanness that we want. And the ring heaters that are uh, annular uh, heater based on Joule effect to uh, act on biothermoelastic deformation on the radius of curvature of, ma of uh, core optics and are deployed everywhere on the old core optics. Uh, and, of course, we have sensing to look at the wavefront deformation with carbon uh, wavefront sensor uh, that are divided in those two uh, types. Uh, the one which looks in the recycling cavity uh, on axis and the other that looks on the high reflective part of the, of the mirrors, just a reflection of axis measurement. Of course, there is also face cameras that are not shown in this. What regards the Hartmann wavefront sensor, they are differential sensors, and they, they work like this. They, they have a um, plate with holes, and the holes project uh, spots on the CCD. And from the displacement of this array of spots, you can recover the wavefront deformation uh, in time with respect to a reference. So you have differential, uh, basically a differential sensor with a very high sensitivity. You, you see here, for instance, that with 100 uh, average, f average frames, you get an R RMS value of the residual OPL uh, of 0 0.1 nanometers, which is very impressive. And you can arrange it in, in uh, our TCS system in two different uh, uh, configurations with an on-axis, uh, as I said, uh, measurement. And you have a telescope because you have to fit uh, the dimension of the spot uh, on the Hartmann plate with its optimal value and on the test mass that you want to measure. This is, of course, a double pass measurement. And I also a double pass reflected pass for 
called your faxes measurement. Uh, in perspective, we know that the accuracy, we, we are, as I said, of this uh, sensor is impressive. Uh, so we have not so much to complain about this, but there is room for improvements. For instance, we know that uh, the variation of temperature uh, acts as a deformation on the, on the plate of, the, of Hartmann, uh, co causing a, a displacement of the holes. So this is a spurious curvature introduced in our sensor. So we need to control the temperature, at least for future application. And uh, also we have to find uh, uh, something to fix the thermal defocus uh, that we know that will, be, will happen at some, some level uh, due to the expansion of the uh, telescopes. But this can be done, for instance, with a two-color system that makes use of a secondary beam with a different uh, wavelength to directly measure the defocus and subtract it. Uh, at the moment, the spatial resolution of this uh, sensor is 7 millimeters. Uh, it will be uh, upgraded, I think, uh, is in the plane to get an upgraded version of this, but it's not trivial, will uh, require an optimization of all the parameters in the design of the sensor. Uh, start, let's start uh, looking at the actuators. This is the ring heater, the usual ring heater uh, that has, is used in advanced LIGO, GEO, and advanced LIGO, that is uh, ultra vacuum compatible, uh, integrated in the payload, um, and it acts a change in the radius of curvature of the mass, but always in the same direction, in the uh, obtaining a reduction of the radius of curvature. Uh, and also it introduces a thermal lens because it's heating the, the, the mass, the, the optics, so it introduces a thermal lens inside the test mass. Um, the, we, the basic design for advanced Virgo encompasses uh, two counter-propagating coils, uh, so to have a reduction uh, a cons partial cancellation of the magnetic couplet noise uh, uh, that acts, for instance, on the magnets on top of mirrors. Um, another useful thing about the ring heater is that they can provide uh, a center reference on the test mass in the Hartmann maps. Uh, in, the, in perspective, uh, we think that using the ring heater is still a choice for the future detectors, uh, at least for those uh, that will work at room temperature because the correction is highly spherical in both the thermal lens and the induced deformation. The uh, main point here is that we have long thermal times uh, to get uh, the uh, <coughs> regime condition for this actuator. If we want to have also a uh, correction in the, in the direction of increasing the radius of curvature, we can think about the Virgo-like uh, croc uh, solution, which is the one well known from the first Virgo application. Here, in this case, the deformation is less spherical due to the angle of incidence of the heating projection. Or the CO2 uh, actuators. Of course, the CO2 wavelength is the optimal one to be absorbed by the compensation plate uh, that, are, that are made by, uh, of silica. Um, uh, this is, in this case, for the TCS in advanced Virgo, we have a multi-actuation approach. It is divided. Uh, uh, depending on the shape of the, of the aberration you have. Uh, for instance, uh, a central heating correction for axisymmetric uh, lens, uh, spurious lens, uh, diverging in this case, and again for lens, uh, axisymmetric, um, in general, axisymmetric uh, 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 aberration, you have the so-called DAS, that is double axical system, and is composed by two rings with different uh, radius and thickness uh, to act uh, uh, compensating the beam power, the, the YAG beam absorber in the, in the optics. And if you have a residual distortion due uh, to other effects, uh, in homogeneities and so on, you can act on, on this with a scanning system. That is basically a scan on top of the compensation plate, plate of, the, of a CO2 beam to recover a given heating profile uh, that is the optimal one to correct for residual distortion. In this case, in perspective, of course, we have to keep in mind that the wavelength that we choose for this kind of uh, work depends on the material of the substrate. Uh, while I forgot to say that the dust uh, uh, is, is hidden here, the dust actuator uh, at the moment can be uh, tuned online uh, with a proper actuator remotely controlled, so you can tune the dimension of these rings. Uh, so this is something that we should 
could be useful as according to our experience also for the central heating. So the, the dimension of central heating also should be in future tuned online. Uh, the main point here is the quality of compensation depends on the goodness of the beam that you use, the CO2 beam that you use for this compensation. So the precise beam shaping requ requires a good quality of the laser output. This is not the case uh, at the moment with our CO2 sources in Virgo, as you see here. And this reflects immediately as an impact on the, on the ring uh, of the double axis system. You see here this shadow. So we are thinking about designing something that will fix this problem. For instance, at the moment we have a special filtering on top of the benches, but this is something very rough for the moment. So maybe single, optical, single mode optical fibers with this power seems that is very difficult. So we are designing a mode cleaner uh, to have a, a, a better, let's say, beam of the CO2 laser. The design is, uh, has been developed with a, a scheme of a triangular, a triangular cavity because we, there is no Faraday isolator available for CO2. We are aiming at the reduction of the, of the higher order modes uh, with a finesse of 100 or something like this. Of course, we have to take into account the thermal effects on core optics. We have a feasibility study design already done for a source that we have in a lab. Uh, this is uh, the design of the, of the triangular cavity in Inva. Uh, the main problem here is that the EOM crystals for the CO2 wavelength are very, very expensive. So we are thinking about using AOM frequency shift uh, to do the pound river rule technique in this case. The, we have also in Tor Vergata this facility called Tetis, <coughs> that is a scaled down version of Varun's Virgo to uh, uh, study and test uh, the TCS strategies in uh, perspective. Uh, we, we have all the actuators that we have also in Virgo, ring heaters, gas, uh, central heating, and also uh, arc away from camera, both in on-axis and off-axis configuration. And there is room for studying different configurations, for instance, the two-color system that I already uh, talked about, and uh, sensing parameters that we can have access to, sens to sensing parameters that uh, we cannot look uh, uh, in advanced Virgo, for instance, temperatures everywhere, and uh, thermal defocus, and so on. This is a scheme of how the, the bench of Tetis uh, looks, uh, looks like. Uh, the two lines on axis and off axis of the um, arc mobile from sensor, the uh, central heating actuation on the test mass in vacuum. Uh, we have also the double axis consistent projected on the CP, uh, and uh, the two uh, rings are produced using two uh, axicons that are then re recombined using a thin film polarizer. Um, these are examples of what we have done with Tetis. Uh, that uh, was useful for uh, the integration of the system in advanced Virgo. This, for instance, is a test uh, with a spatial filtering with uh, 300 micrometers phenol, and then after that we, we put the phenol on top of the benches in Virgo, in advanced Virgo. You see that we recovered a pretty good uh, shape of the, of the beam with this very simple technique, tested on Tetis. Again, we tested on Tetis uh, tem temperature control for the Hartmann, and at the end, we obtained a pretty stable temperature variation within 0.01 degree Celsius. This is uh, more than enough for our uh, Hartmann sensor, and is not at, level, at the moment is not needed on the benches in advanced vehicle, but we have the, all the system to do this if needed in the future. Another example is the optimization of the dust profile. At the beginning, we found something like this, uh, this is a stigmatism in the rings uh, is ev evident and is due to the diverging beams, of the diverging beam on top of the um, thin film uh, uh, polarizer that recombines the two beams. Uh, so we just uh, studied the effect of putting a telescope straddling on the thin film polarizer to get a not practically uh, collimated uh, beam here, and we found that the astigmatism, as expected, was removed. This is another example where how we can make use of a Tetis, uh, because uh, using Tetis with a finite element analysis of, of, the, um, of the process that we are st studying, we get an improved no knowledge of the process itself. For instance, here 
there is a comparison of the actuation using the ring heater, thermal lensing inside the test mass, compared with the simulation with ANSYS. Again, here, central heating, actuation, and uh, switched off, uh, switched on, and then switched off, compared with the ANSYS simulation. So at the end, we get a, a nice agree agreement what, of uh, what we, me we measure and what we know about our system. Future actuators are foreseen, of course, uh, in this perspective. For instance, to remove frequency noise that is uh, delivered by the scanning system uh, in the uh, sensitivity, uh, we can think about DC actuators, so without any frequency dependence. Uh, for instance, the formable mirror to shape the CO2 beam to get the, the proper um, um, actuation he heating profile on the CP. In, uh, at the University of Tovergata, we have, uh, we bought from Adaptica this system that is a 12 per 12 actuators uh, deformable mirror, and this is enough for correcting up to uh, one centimeter uh, sc length scale defects on the uh, CP of advanced vehicles required. This is just a simulation of what we can do with this system, and we are just testing it and finding the uh, influence functions of, of all the actuators. Of course, there are other uh, possibilities, for instance, either arrays as in geo. And this is uh, what we expect, <laughs> let's say, just an exercise of what, what we expect for ET and what we can do. Uh, in the case of a high frequency ET, uh, we, the, the idea is to make use of Laguerre Gauss modes, and th these modes will have an impact of the, uh, through the absorption in the masses, it will have an impact of the, on the uh, wavefront distortion. This wavefront distortion can be corrected using the, as uh, in Virgo, uh, in Virgo like TCS, a uh, heating pattern on the CP to get a very flat, uh, so uh, again, to correct for the deformation. Uh, we can think about having ring heaters also, and there is this point, this caveat regarding the fact that the current polishing techniques seem to not be enough for having Alger Gauss mode, as uh, Michele and Jerome were discussing. So probably we need an, uh, some kind of actuator in an advanced FTTS to tackle with this. <coughs> Let me just at the end uh, tell this, uh, a keyword versatility, that means that uh, we, in the, our experience we gain, uh, we gain in advanced Vigo TCS, uh, we used, made use of the TCS system also to face unexpected commission in needs. For instance, uh, uh, cor uh, improvement of contrast effect, uh, the thermal lens, uh, uh, due to the ring heater, as I say, served as a reference for the Hartman maps. We used the uh, sled beam uh, to get a reference for the replacement of, uh, of mirrors and so on. And also there are forcing issues on the TCS actuator, where the TCS actuators can be useful. For instance, uh, reducing impact of parametric instabilities. And also, uh, that, that mode is one of the tools that we can imagine to use for adaptive mode matching for injection squeeze beam, and in general, reduction of trip losses, round trip losses in filter cavities. So, the flexibility of concept in the field of TCS it will be a resource and a key feature, uh, we think, uh, for the adaptive optics in the future uh, detectors. Okay. We have time for questions. Jérôme. In one of your slides, you mentioned uh, two color systems. What? Could you could you say a little bit more uh, what it is? So the two color system. Uh, let me recover the slide, so I can tell you. The two color system is just a way we have to. Uh, solve the problem of thermal defocus in the uh, mm, telescope that we use to fit the dimension of the sled beam to the test mass, because the, the distance um, between these two mirrors is changes with temperature, but if you have a, a, an additional beam, a secondary beam that is stopped here and goes back uh, before sensing the test mass, you can use that beam to uh, measure the thermal defocus of, of, the, te of the telescope, and to do, subtract uh, the thermal focus from the sensing of the test mass. Okay? <laughs> so this is the idea, basically. 
you, of course, you need a different uh, wavelength because you want to reflect back this before entering the test mass. Okay. Any other questions? In fact, I have one. When you speak about ET and we learn that maybe we go for cryogenics, so then using thermal compensations on the cryogenic system seems to be weird. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, of course. But this is, uh, in fact, is for the high frequency <laughs> part of the, this exercise is just for the high frequency part of the ATV. <laughs> Questions or comments? Okay, so let's stop here. Thank, thank, thanks again for the speaker. And thank you for all the speakers of the sessions.